I did it is I went from being citizen soldier to citizen politician. Because this is a transformation that is fundamentally important if we are, in fact, to save our nation. And let us not relax our standards and move away from the fact that we are fighting to save our nation. You see, we have a commander in chief who will do anything to abuse and misuse the United States military. He will use our troops as props and stand in front of them at every opportunity, and yet in the dark of night, he continues to stab us all in the back. And this is fundamentally wrong. I was a graduate of the United States Naval Academy. I spent 24 years in uniform. There are hundreds of thousands of veterans today who cannot see a doctor. And yet we have an administration who dares to call those of us who disagree with the president unpatriotic. Now just for the record, and perhaps for the attention of a rather tall, overbearing, bloviating, blowhardy, hypocritical, lying, media, megalomaniac. I am not a member of the Ku Klux Klan, nor am I a Nazi. <laughs> and Bill O'Reilly, I'm talking to you. <laughs> because while you spent your life dodging the draft and making millions of dollars in the backs of those who are paid less than the minimum wage to guarantee your safety and your democracy, we were fighting to make you safe. Mr. O'Reilly, how dare you insult the United States military every time you go on television? Are you a Republican or a yeah. Democrat? 
And that is endemic of so many of the issues that face the American people today that have nothing to do with politics. Since when did access to health care for all Americans become a political issue instead of a national birthright? General Clark, my boss of four years, and let me just correct, I, I didn't work with him, I worked very much for him. <laughs> After all, he was a four-star general and I was a Navy commander. And the relationship I took 24 years to clearly understand my mind. <laughs> and he reinforced every day. And I was seen giving him a salutary bear hug after he declared his candidacy these many years ago to run in the primary of the Democratic Party. And I was called into Congressman Duncan Hunter's office. Now, here's the difference. You guys are booing Duncan Hunter, not me. So. <laughs> and I was, I was summarily fired. And I was told if you denounce your friendship to General Clark, a man who arguably saved your life and medically evacuated you to the United States of America to get the health care that you needed, then you can keep your job. And I looked at Duncan Hunter and said, Congressman, you can take this job and stuff it. Yeah. And I got to walk out. And this is what we need to do as a nation. You see, I didn't leave the Republican Party. It ran away from me. And it ran away from this country. And it has become so constricted in its own twisted evil that even those who look in the mirror and say I'm a Republican can no longer say it unless the bathroom door is closed and no one can hear them. <laughs> you see, the Republican Party may have once been a party of a big tent, but it's now become a very, very small outhouse. <laughs> and you know what it's full of. <laughs> and Bill O'Reilly, I'm talking to you. Yeah. I was drawn from being a citizen soldier into citizen politician because across a broad spectrum of life's experiences, I saw my government failing my family. I looked at my children, who were then in grade school, who are now graduating from high school, and I was unable to promise to them that I would give them a better nation than that nation I received from my immigrant parents. Oh, my immigrant parents. <laughs> My father, my father enlisted in the United States Navy in World War II and retired 36 years later as a carrier air wing commander. Only in the United States of America can that happen. And this president is doing everything he can do to ensure that that cannot happen. He is single-handedly destroying the American dream. And we must, we have to stand up and ensure that not only does he leave office, but that his legacy is crushed so it never happens again. Bill O'Reilly, I'm talking to you. Because people like Bill O'Reilly and Rush Limbaugh and Laura Ingram and Mike Savage have filled this country with a misguided hatred and rage that is destroying the very American values that my father gave to me, that I learned at the United States Naval Academy, that I wore a uniform for for 24 years to defend around the globe. Bill O'Reilly, I am talking to you. I'm running for the United States Congress from the most Republican district in the Northeast. I was told that I would be lucky to come with an 18% of my ultimate right-wing, long-minded, rubber-stamping rubber -standing Republican opponent, Randy Poole. And we came within 1%, we lost by four <coughs> votes per election district, just four. Wow. I stood and said, it is not enough to talk about campaign finance reform. We have to fund this race by doing it. And therefore, I raised $1,570,000 from 17,000 contributors without taking a penny of corporate money. If citizens across this country believe that when Thomas Paine wrote that famous pamphlet and nailed it on a post in Boston, 
And when they look at that example and they realize that when you write a post and put it on daily posts, you are doing the exact same thing. Bill O'Reilly, I'm talking to you. <laughs> because you're insulting the people that made this country great over 200 years ago by exercising citizen journalism and bringing about the greatest democracy and democratic revolution that this world has ever seen, and they fight every day to suppress it. We fight every day to carry that legacy. The fight will and must go on. Thank you very much.